Have you ever been talking to your doctor about your statin side effects and maybe mentioned somebody else who had something similar and they just dismissed it as anecdotal? People have a tendency to either give too much weight to anecdotal evidence or perhaps not enough. Let's talk about that. Stay tuned. First, let's get some terms out of the way. I want to zoom in on anecdotal evidence. Well, first, an anecdote, as you probably know, is just a, a story, a short snippet of a story that somebody tells you. Well, let's look at Merriam-Webster's definition of anecdotal evidence. They say it's a noun. It's evidence in the form of stories that people tell about what has happened to him. And they give an example. His conclusions are not supported by data. They are only based on anecdotal evidence. So you notice it's kind of pejorative. It's actually knocking down anecdotal evidence. As with most science, we have to really be clear about our definition. So I'm going to enhance this a little. This is just my definition. This is what I mean when I talk about anecdotal evidence. That is, I accept Merriam-Webster's definition, but I add a little bit more. So there's evidence in the form of stories that people tell about what has happened to them that lack independent verification in statistical context, and that independent verification may include determining a cause and effect relationship, but may provide clues about the underlying subject of interest. So why is that important? Many discoveries in science get their starts as anecdotes. If you think about it, an observation is made, that's just a data point. An anecdote, well, it's a data point without statistical context and without independent verification, but it's a start. Somebody notices something that they feel might be interesting and needs an explanation. That's how a lot of science gets started. For example, on a day that I recorded this, there was a total eclipse of the sun. First time that happened, people told stories about it, about the sun getting eaten up. Oh, there was something real behind that. It really happened. Now, not all anecdotes are real. As an example, when I was younger and my wife was pregnant, I was talking to a friend's mother and I'd mentioned that I didn't want my wife going near the cat's litter box. I never got to say because there are certain diseases that can be picked up that can really harm the fetus. She went, oh yeah, I know somebody who saw a cat and they were frightened by it and their baby ended up with a birthmark that was shaped like a cat. Mrs. G and I were on different wavelengths for sure in that particular case. But that demonstrates the range of anecdotes, how they can be pretty ridiculous or there may be something behind them. Hypotheses get formed, data is gathered, formally studied, verified, and that includes the cause and effect relationship. A statistical component may be worked out if it's applicable. And then most importantly, experiences shared as anecdotes help us understand our own situation. So in the case of statins, it's kind of obvious. There are all sorts of anecdotes out there about people's experiences with statins. Can we dismiss them all? Some of them are undoubtedly mistaken. There was just happened to be a person started taking a statin and they just happened to get some unexpected health issue in their life that had nothing to do with it. And honestly, I couldn't point to one and say, oh, that's what happened to you. In reality, we just can't tell what's real and what's not. But when we have an overwhelming number of them, Somebody will put in the comments that, well, there an overwhelming number of peasants thought that the earth was flat or whatever. So numbers really don't mean anything. But when there's a lot of independent stories that all converge on the same thing, that there are a lot of adverse effects with statins, there may be something behind it and it's worth looking into. I mean, when you think of it, my own personal experience is an anecdote. If you saw my earlier video where I finally made the connection with statins, you'll know that I referenced an article or a letter in the Journal of the American Medical Association by Jonathan McDonald where he pretty much described my exact situation. And like I said then, it was a relief to know that I wasn't crazy, I wasn't the only one out there. And while well, yes, this is an anecdote, but it has enough credibility that the Journal of the American Medical Association printed it in their December 2014 issue. So there are a lot of statin anecdotes out here, and here's some of their sources. First, there are Facebook groups and feeds. There are the comment sections and statin-related videos. This channel is the only one I know of that is devoted exclusively to statins, but there are a lot of others. Dr. Rob Siwis, Dr. Ford Brewer, Dr. Ken Berry. I hesitate to keep on naming because I'm going to leave somebody out. There are a lot of good ones out there who have videos on this topic, or you can just find random videos of interviews with Asim Mohatra. Plenty of researchers and doctors who have the credentials to bring these points up. Well, they will in a video, and they'll get a lot of comments of people sharing their experiences. Then there's askapatient.com, and we're gonna go over each of these. First, let's look at Facebook. I just went to the search bar, typed in statin, and it gave me this. Right at the top, there are many groups. If you say see all here, I'm 
not going to show it here, but there's a lot more than this. So they have a lot of good information. They can provide resources that I can't through a YouTube channel where I just do the videos, but they're good groups to join for finding people who've had very similar experiences as you. For some reason, there's a hair loss thing that came up on this. Don't know why. I don't know why that would apply to me. I hear we have a woman who is talking about the dangers of taking statins when you're diabetic. Uh, here's another gentleman who is talking about some studies that confirm what he's been saying. Here we have a woman saying, what's worse, high cholesterol and statin drug that put you in the ER? Not much of a choice. Dr. James Neller, I'd never seen him before. He had an interesting video here. Here we have a more mainstream medical one. I haven't watched it yet to see if it is balanced or if it is just statin propaganda or anti-statin. A few other people have posted things. An interview with Asim Mahatra, one of the names of people who are very skeptical of statins. Here, something that came up recently, I'll have to make a video on it, about getting statins in the United States without a prescription. I think that is Stan Nissen, I'm not positive. Uh, so there's a lot of good information that you can get from Facebook feeds. So in this case, I went to YouTube, I typed in Rob Cywis, and when I got to his page I typed in statins search on statins here we can see people telling their anecdotes and that's what this particular video is about 69 was slightly raised cholesterol it's always been a little high young doctor became visibly annoyed when I refused statins I think a lot of us can relate to that doc wanted to put him on meds somebody who's been on a low carb diet said I run the risk of having a stroke I said no thanks I'll take my chances don't trust the medical establishment hospice nurse here she has autonomy when people are in hospice there's no point in them taking their medication medications. She gets people off statins and many patients have fewer symptoms and some are discharged from hospice. It turns out that statins and this person's experience can convince the medical community that a person is on end of life when it's really adverse effects from statins. So just going to any of these, uh, Dr. Cywis, uh, Den Eckberg, Ford Brewer, Ken Berry, just go to any of their YouTube channels and type in the search bar, type in the word statin and you'll see their videos on statins and people love to share their stories because of the problems that they've had with them. Now granted, it is a self-selected group. You can't tell anything statistically about this. When you consider that there are 93 million people as of the last number, it's probably up to 100 million people now who in the United States alone who are on statins and a lot of them don't have problems. But for those of us who do, it's good to see these stories so that we can relate to them, perhaps recognize that we're not alone and and that we're not imagining it. And this final one is to me the most interesting. It's a website called askapatient.com. It's where patients can register their anecdotes on taking these statin drugs. Little tip here, if you type in statin in the search bar, you won't see anything because there isn't a single drug name statin. But if you go to advanced search and then type in the drug name or ingredient and type in statin, then it will give you all the various different records. For example, you see Lipitor, Crestor, Zocor, Provacol, Mevacor, Occasionally something will come up that's not actually a statin, nice statin. I don't know why it's given that name. It's not really a statin. Vitorin is interesting. It's actually a combination of zetamibe and one of the statins. So let's just look at that because it's very instructive here. I found it very interesting to look at people who are fans of a drug as well as people who seem to hate it. In other words, the five ratings and the one ratings. You can find a lot of discussion from people about problems with statins. I also see this here, and maybe I should do a video on this for example, and this is all anonymous, so I'm not really exposing anybody, but here's somebody who gave it a rating of five, and this is, by the way, simvastatin, and simvastatin is Zocor, so this is a combination of Zocor and Zetamide. Here is a 72-year-old woman who says, I was on this years ago, and my PCP took me off it. I don't know why he stopped it, as I had no problem with it. I tried every other option on the market. They all gave me muscle aches. Okay, so here's a person who's had problems with statin medications, and she's 72, her cholesterol top 325, my current PCP CP was in a panic, clearly transmitted that panic to the patient. She says that diet and exercise and red yeast rice only lowered it by 60 points. Okay, so if it was, that means she's in the mid 260s, which is perfectly healthy for a 72 year old female. I asked them to put me back in Viotra and I'm not having any problems at all. Just sad I went so long untreated when this was working just fine. You read between the lines there, the person feels that being treated was necessary for this 
condition. That's just an example of the pharmaceutical industry's hold on a lot of our psyches. Here's another one. My cholesterol levels plummeted. LDL went from a 130 to 75. Well, 130 is not actually that bad of LDL. HDL went from 39 to 46, which is really not much of an improvement. Overall cholesterol dropped to 135, which to me is dangerously low, with no change in diet or exercise. So what is that telling us? Here's a person who isn't going to change lifestyle, thinks that his high cholesterol is a problem, probably doesn't have any understanding of the quality of his lipids. 39 for HDL is kind of low. You want it to be better. But you notice that he just wants to have a pill, take care of it. I'm not going to change my diet or exercise. I mean, that's what I get from reading between the lines. And again, this is anonymous. So, you know, I'm not really picking on the person. They entered this 10 years ago. So this just strikes me as what's really happening. The people who love it aren't even questioning whether it's necessary. They just see that it lowers their cholesterol. And to them, that's enough. That says it worked. Did it work? Well, it did lower your cholesterol. That's certainly something that nobody denies that statins will do for us. But whether that's necessary or not, that's not even questioned in some of these records. So overall, these are very interesting stories. I feel heavy in my legs, constantly moving to you extreme pains in the esophageal area, stomach pains, extreme gas. So all these people are having lots of problems that maybe some of us can relate to and see that again, that we're not alone. So here are my closing thoughts on this. And I'm going to turn to a quote by a woman named Sarah Maddox. I have seen this all over the internet, but I have never been able to definitively identify which Sarah Maddox it is. And that's a fairly common name. A couple of them are authors. Some of them are other public figures. I don't know if this is a Sarah Maddox who is a private figure or a more public persona. If you happen to know which Sarah Maddox it is and can let me know and I'll at least pin a comment to give her due credit here. And this is something that I think every doctor should consider when they're talking to a patient who presents to them with statin adverse effects that maybe they've never heard of before. Let's just read it together. When you debate a person about something that affects them more than it affects you, remember that it will take a much greater emotional toll on them than on you. Okay, doctor, remember, they're pretty distraught. I certainly was with all the effects that I was having. For you, it may feel like an academic exercise. For them, it feels like revealing their pain only to have you dismiss their experience and sometimes their humanity. The fact that you might remain calm under these circumstances is a consequence of your privilege, not increased objectivity on your part. So stay humble. She was probably not thinking about talking to a doctor about statin adverse effects when she came up with this quote. There are probably other things. Could be near-death experiences, for example, or religious feelings or anything like that. But this really drives it home for me. This is what we are often dealing with. A doctor just doesn't want to listen to you when you say, for example, this causes mental fog. So remember when you're looking at an anecdotes of other people's experiences, yes, they're not independently verified necessarily, but when there's so many of them out there and they're all coming from independent sources and they're all talking about very similar experiences, maybe there's something there. And that part I think is missed by a lot of the pro and pushing doctors. So that's what I've got on this. If you appreciate this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this topic or others you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for listening. <music>